the lonely pursuit really surrounded by the echoes of lives extinguished? But fear not, my dear detective, for I shall lend my expertise to your investigation. Great, thank you so much. You look great, by the way. That top is very flattering. I just want to know um, how the bodies were. What condition were the bodies in? Thanks. Sure. Well, my observant detective Martini, the condition of the bodies was quite disturbing. To say the least. Each one bore the marks of a violent end, leaving a trail of clues for us to follow. Shall we start with Nicola Grossman? His body, discovered outside Pascala's groceries, showed signs of a single lethal blow to the back of the neck with a butcher's knife. The precision of the strike suggests a calculated act, a deliberate intent to end a life. Now, let us move on to Haley Greenwood. Great. Uh, Haley Greenwood. Um, what was she like? Yeah, dear Haley Greenwood. She was a young dancer, full of vitality and dreams. Her vibrant spirit was tragically snuffed out by a series of brutal blows to the head. The force of the impact was such that fragments of a stiletto shoe were found embedded in her skull. It's a grim reminder of the violence that can be inflicted upon the human form. But let me assure you, my dear detective, that justice shall prevail. We shall uncover the truth behind these heinous acts and bring solace to those who mourn. Great, thank you so much. Are you free later tonight? You're welcome. Detective Martini. I'm glad I could provide you with the information you needed. As for your question about my availability tonight, I'm afraid I have a prior engagement. My nights are often occupied with my work here at the morgue, analyzing evidence and preparing for the next day's autopsies. But fear not, my dedicated detective Martini, for I am always here to assist you in any way I can during our working hours. Great, I didn't ask, but um, I just want to know when you are free next, maybe we could grab a martini since I am Detective Martini. Oh, the irony of names, dear detective. How amusing it is that you bear the moniker of a martini while I am surrounded by the remnants of life's final moments. Though I must admit, a martini does sound rather tempting after a long day of dissecting the mysteries of death. Alas, my duties as a coroner keep me chained to these walls, forever in the pursuit of truth and justice. But worry not, for I shall raise a glass and spare to the camaraderie between us as we navigate through the darkness together. Cheers, detective. I didn't ask. Indeed, my apologies for my tangential musings, Detective Martini. Sometimes, the mind wanders in peculiar directions, especially when one is immersed in the realm of mortality. Yes, let's not lose sight of our purpose here. The bodies that lay before me, their stories etched into every scar and mark, call out for answers. It is my duty to unravel the secrets they hold to piece together the puzzle of their untimely demise. Again? I didn't ask. Apologies, my dear detective. It seems I got carried away with my thoughts. Let us refocus on the matter at hand. The condition of the bodies I examined was indeed distressing. The injuries sustained by both Nicola Grossman and Haley Greenwood were significant and indicative of a violent encounter. It is truly disheartening to witness the fragility of life and the devastating consequences that can arise from such brutality. But fear not, for we shall pursue justice related faith, seeking truth amidst the chaos of these tragic events. All right, I have to leave. She is not letting me go at this point. Um, all right, cool. So we should go to the police station. Hello, Chief Gritiski. I am Detective Martini. And I'm here uh, to investigate the matter of the deceased. And also, if you want to have a beer later, I'm free. We can go down to the pub, have a little scallywag of a good time. I asked the person from the morgue out, but she wouldn't shut the hell up. And, you know, I'm, I'm over it. So if you want to hang out, I'm interested. Detective Martini, is this some kind of a joke? I have no time for frivolous outings or socializing. We're here to solve a murder case, not to have a beer and gallivant around town. Now, what updates do you have for me regarding the investigation? Okay, you didn't need to be rude. I was merely trying to, you know, take this investigation out to the pub so we can wet our whistle. Furthermore, I have only been to the morgue and the uh, mortician wouldn't shut up and she just kept going on and on and on but she said that the bodies are in pretty bad condition the bodies are in bad condition you say that's unfortunate 
did the mortician provide any specific details about the state of the bodies. We need to gather as much information as possible to move forward with the investigation. To be honest, she just was talking about other things, but she did mention a skull being, uh, you know, uh, blunt force trauma. I will, I will say, I will use that word with a heel, apparently. A blunt force trauma to the skull, you mean? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Blunt objects can certainly cause significant damage. We'll have to look into whether there's a pattern emerging in these murders. Daddy, stop flirting with me. I will go back to the morgue. Flirting, my dear detective, I assure you, there is no flirting happening here. I am simply urging you to prioritize the investigation and obtain the necessary information from the coroner. Now, go back to the morgue and find out everything you can about the victim's conditions. We must piece together the puzzle and catch the perpetrator. Off you go now, and remember, no more distractions. Playing hard to get. I get it. I'll be back. Oh, is that so? Well, I look forward to your return with the relevant information, Detective Martini. Don't keep me waiting too long. Remember, we have a murder case to solve. You want me so bad. Want you, my dear detective. I assure you, I have no desire for such frivolities. I am solely focused on solving this homicide case and bringing justice to the victims. Now, if there are no further distractions, I suggest you go and gather the necessary evidence. Time is of the essence. Guys, I am shocked and appalled. He wants us so bad. Ooh. Hello, Chief. It is I, Detective Martini. Uh, Dirty Martini. Detective Martini. That's a peculiar name. But I'm afraid you've got it wrong. My name is Chief Gradesky. Can I help you with something, Detective Martini? Yes, hello. I have figured out uh, what um, or how the three people were murdered. Oh, really? You figured out how the murders were done? Well, don't keep me in suspense, Detective. Spit it out. What's your brilliant deduction? Oh, I'll spit it out. Uh, you free for dinner later? Free food in Atlanta. How does that have anything to do with the murder cases here in Vaudeville? Unless you discovered a killer with an appetite for international cuisine, I fail to see the connection. Now, let's stick to the matter at hand, shall we? Who do you suspect is responsible for these gruesome crimes? so sorry chief i meant that I, I i got information about the bodies i don't know who who committed the crimes yet well well detective martini it seems you've finally come to your senses information about the bodies you say that's a start pray tell what exactly have you found out don't keep me waiting detective i haven't got all day if you shut your pie hole, I can tell you. So Nicola, uh, it seems to be a, a butcher knife to the neck. Haley, uh, blunt force trauma suspected with a high heel shoe. And then Maria uh, got attacked by animals. A butcher knife, a high heel shoe, and an animal attack. Quite the variety of weapons, don't you think? And yet, there doesn't seem to be a clear pattern connecting them. Tell me, what led you to these conclusions, detective? Is there any evidence or witness testimony supporting these theories? I'm curious to know how you arrived at these rather unique conclusions. Okay, enough with the attitude. You told me to go to the morgue. I asked the mortician and this is the information she gave me. And now I'm relaying it to you. Ah, so you visited the morgue, have you? Good work, detective. I apologize if my previous remarks came across as grumpy. Now, let's focus on the information you obtained. The mortician provided you with these details about the murder methods. That does sound intriguing. 
but it still leaves us with the question of motive and the identity of the killer. Have you come across anything else that might shed some light on these cases, or are we still missing crucial pieces of the puzzle? Sir, with all due respect, you told me to visit the morgue. I'm giving you the information from the mortician. I still have to go and find pieces of the puzzle. And if you're grumpy, maybe you need a little snack because you work hard and I don't think you're appreciated enough. Oh, I see. My apologies for the misunderstanding, Detective Martini. It seems I may have been a bit too hasty in my expectations. Thank you for reeling the information from the mortician. As for a snack, I appreciate your concern, but I'll manage just fine. My priority is solving these murders and ensuring justice is served. So, if there's nothing more at the moment, I suggest you continue your investigation and keep me updated on any significant developments. Of course, Chief. Thank you so much for your apology, and uh, I'm glad you'll be okay. Now, hear me out. I know you don't want any funny business, but this is purely for work. Can we get together later and talk about this case in private? There's something I need to tell you, but I need to tell you when we're alone. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't accommodate your request, detective. While I understand the need for privacy in certain matters, discussing this case in private is not something I can entertain at the moment. We must focus on maintaining transparency and adhering to proper procedures. If you have something important to share, feel free to do so now. Otherwise, let's work together within the confines of the police station. Yep, no, I totally understand. Um, do you have a wife? Now, now, Detective Martini, I appreciate your curiosity, but let's keep the conversation professional, shall we? My personal life is not relevant to this investigation. We have more pressing matters to attend to. If you have any further information or updates on the murder cases, I'm all ears. I do actually. Apparently, uh, one of the bodies were, was near a stereo and the stereo was playing Fireball by Pitbull. Do you see any correlation as to why that was playing? Fireball by Pitbull, you say. Interesting choice of music. But forgive me for being skeptical, but how does the song play near one of the victims connect to the murders? I Are don't... you suggesting that there is some sort of correlation between the song and the crimes? If so, please enlighten me, detective. Fireball. Here's the thing. I think the murderer liked pitbull right so when they are killing someone they put pitbull on to encourage them you know what i mean detective martini while your theory is certainly imaginative i must remind you to approach this investigation with a level-headed mindset drawing connections based on a particular song preference is quite a stretch we cannot jump to conclusions without concrete evidence. Let's focus on gathering solid facts and following proper investigative procedures. If you come across any substantial leads or evidence, do let me know. But for now, let's not get carried away with speculative theories. Okay, no worries. I will be back soon. And hey, that leather jacket looks really nice on you. Oh, do you think so, detective? Well, I suppose even a worn-out chief like me can still manage to pull off a decent look. But thank you for the compliment. Could you just tell me uh, what you know about each crime scene of Nicola, Haley, and Maria? Ah, uh, Nicholas, Haley, and Maria. Three unfortunate souls who met their untimely demise. Let's see what I can recall about each of their crime scenes. Nicholas Grossman, the finance man. His body was found outside Pascala's grocery shop in the morning. It was a gruesome sight, blood staining the pavement. The poor fellow had suffered quite a beating. Haley Greenwood, the dancer. Her lifeless body was discovered in an alley behind the club where she worked. A tragic end for a young talent.
And Maria? Maria Jansen, huh? Well, she was a 23-year-old blonde with a Scandinavian look. Her bloody, battered body was found just outside her apartment in central vaudeville. Quite a disturbing scene, I must say. Anything specific you want to know about her case, Detective Martini? No, that is all. I shall return. Oh, leaving so soon, are we? Just when things were getting interesting. But hey, if you've got all the information you need, then be my guest. Off you go, Detective Martini. Don't forget to keep me updated on any new developments. Um, yes, I'm leaving so soon. I have a job to do. I don't know why you're giving me attitude. And if it's because you secretly like me, then just tell me. Attitude, me. Oh, dear detective, you've misunderstood. It's not attitude. It's just my charming personality shining through. As for your assumption, I assure you, there's no secret liking here. But I'm curious, what made you think that? Did my wit and wisdom manage to win you over, perhaps? Yeah, definitely the wit and wisdom. And I mean, after this case is over, if you want to just see where this goes, I, I feel like that could be nice because you are flirting with me, Chief Gretzky. And I'm not going to lie to you. I like it. You have Riz. Well, Detective Martini, I must say, your sudden interest in my charm is quite intriguing. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We've got a case to solve, remember? Once this is all over, we can talk about the possibilities. Until then, let's focus on catching the killer, shall we? All good, babe. See you soon. Babe, now that's a nickname I haven't heard in a while quite the bold move, detective. But tell me, what makes you so sure we'll be seeing each other soon? Because... You have a hunch about the next move in the investigation. Or yeah. perhaps something else in mind. I'm curious to know. A bit of both. See you soon, babe. Oh, is that so? Both of them, huh? I must admit, Detective Martini, your cryptic words have piqued my curiosity. Pray, do share what you mean by that. Are you suggesting that our paths will cross again in the near future? I'm quite intrigued to hear your thoughts on the matter. That's exactly what I think. Is that right? You seem rather confident in your prediction, detective. I'm curious to know what leads you to believe in such a meeting. Care to enlighten me? Or are you just trying to keep me on my toes? I'm trying to keep you on your toes, babe. I gotta go. See you soon. My, my, Detective Martini, you certainly have a way with words. Keeping me on my toes, huh? I must say, you've managed to pique my curiosity. I'll be eagerly awaiting that future encounter you speak of. Until then, take care and stay sharp, my dear detective. Farewell for now. Guys, he wants us so bad. He wants us so bad. Oh my God, he wants us. Oh my God, little cheeky bitch. Hello, you look like Willy Wonka. I'm not Willy Wonka. Okay, great. Hello, my name is Detective Babe, and I want to know um, how are you today and if you've heard about the deaths in the town. Detective Martini, my day is always splendid. And yes, I am aware of the unfortunate deaths in town. Tragedy indeed. Uh, did you know anyone that died? No, I do not know anyone who died. Okay, uh, so where were you last night then? That is none of your concern. Okay, uh, one line answer, man. It is my concern because I'm a detective and people died. So where were you last night? Nowhere near the scene of the crime. So where were you? Out and about, my dear detective. Out and about where? None of your business. You realize you look so suspicious that you're not telling me where you were last night? In 
What if I'm being suspicious? What will you do about it, detective? Bring you in for questioning with the police. Good luck with that, my dear. You're a brat. Oh, how observant of you. Where were you last night? Mind your own business. This is my business. I'm a detective. I don't care. I care, you stupid little hat fuck. Where were you last night? Not telling you. Your hat is ugly. Get lost. I don't think you understand. If you don't tell me where you were last night, I'll arrest you. Try it then. Is this a kink of yours? No. How old are you? None of your damn business. Again? It is my business. I'm a detective. I don't give a damn about your detective status. How did you know where the crime scene was when I didn't even say it? You sound suspicious. Just lucky, I suppose. Or you are very guilty. No. Willy Wonka, listen. Tell me where you were last night. Nowhere. You were nowhere, were you? No. What's your problem? You. What did I do? Leave. You're a clown. Shut up. You shut up. No. Your goatee looks stupid. Mind your manners. You're being rude to me. So what? So you're not helping with the investigation. No. Are you flirting with me? No. Do you say anything other than no? Go away. You go away. No. Well, I tried to interview uh, Sax at the circus and he wouldn't tell me anything. He's very suspicious. Um, Sax Subart, huh? That circus performer always gives me a bad vibe. I've never trusted those types. But why do you think he's suspicious? Is there something specific that caught your attention? Every time I would ask him where he was last night, he would say none of your business and he wouldn't comply. None of my business, eh? Hey. Well, that's just typical of him. Always dodging questions and thinking he's above the law. But tell me, Detective Martini, did you notice anything else during your conversation with him? He was Any rude. strange behavior or anything that stood out? He was rude. He would give me one-word answers, and he wouldn't comply with my questions, and he th threatened me. Threatened you, did he? Now that's a serious accusation. What exactly did Monsieur Saksabar say to you? I want to hear every word, detective. Don't leave out any details. He said, if I don't leave, he would take me to the club, throw me behind the alleyway, and kill me. Is that so? Threatening to kill a police officer, huh? That's a bold move, even for someone like him. I must admit, I'm curious to see how this plays out.